Steve ran through the headlines, Mohammed. I think the biggest is that they, they weighed the costs of doing too little or too much and decided it would be riskier to do too little to fight inflation than to overdo it. That's absolutely right, Sarah. You know, though these minutes are as expected to somewhat, but I don't want to overdo it, somewhat more hawkish. What, you, what the minutes do well is balance the inflation battle with the growth and job challenge. What they don't do well, and what the Bank of England has reminded us we have to keep an eye on, is bring in the financial stability challenge. And that's what's missing um, in these minutes. There's a passing reference to liquidity in the Treasury market, but that's about it. But keep in mind, I mean, and our viewers should keep in mind as well, these are the minutes from the last Fed meeting, which was, I mean, you remember, it was a very hawkish Fed meeting. The market tanked afterwards. It fell 5% that week on this idea that they're, they're not going to be slowing down anytime soon. And things really started to get a little more disjointed after that, Mohammed. So, so how, how, how problematic is what you're seeing in the markets at this point? Look, it basically points to the fact that the Fed is so late that it will probably break something on the way to reducing inflation. The most likely victim is economic growth. I think the marketplace is starting to recognize that the risk of recession and what that, that does to earnings is an issue. So think of interest rate risk we've understood, credit risk we've understood. There's a third element that we haven't really priced in at all, which is liquidity risk and market functioning risk. And that, that is something that I hope we're not going to have to price in. But if the UK is telling us anything, is markets are quite fragile after such a long period of zero interest rates and massive liquidity. And the other thing that we're starting to pick up, Mohammed, is that the, the interventions are not proving that successful. It looked like they were at first with Bank of England, Bank of Japan, but, but both the bonds and the, and the currencies and those, and those markets are back to pre-intervention levels. So what's it going to take here? It's going to take a change in the basic um, economic measures. So in the case of Japan, at some point, they have to exit YCC yield curve control. Um, until they do that, they're going to find it very hard to control that currency depreciation. And when they exit, that in itself is going to be a challenge. For the UK, it's very different. For the UK, there's a short-term challenge of stabilizing the pension system. That's a Bank of England issue. But then there's the underlying problem of a government thinking it has more fiscal space than it does. And I don't see a way out unless the government does a U-turn on its tax cuts promises. And that's going to be hard to do. But that's the only way out of the mess that you face in right now. The other thing people are worried about is the, the U.S. dollar, which is stronger again right now, just this relentless march higher. I, I was curious to get your reaction, Mohammed, to, to Janet Yellen's comments, the Treasury Secretary. I asked her yesterday if, if she was okay with it and, and whether she would consider joining other central banks that are trying to intervene to stop the dollar strength. Just listen to what she said on that. Well, I, I've said on many occasions that I think a market-determined value for the dollar is in America's interest, and I continue to feel that way. And I do think that the pressures we're seeing largely reflect fundamentals and policies that are, um, by and large, appropriate. She blessed it. I mean, she, she basically said that it, it makes sense and we want a market value. So is the market going to keep daring daring her and others to do more? Should you just buy the dollar? Well, there's three things pushing the, pushing the dollar, which is a favorable interest rate differential. That is going to exhaust itself. A favorable growth differential, that's going to stay for a while. And of course, our safe haven status. So I warn people, don't bet against the dollar too early. I've been saying this, as you know, Sarah, for the last three years. Um, the time will come, but it's not just now. But what the U.S. authorities are going to get an earful of is all the central bankers and government officials coming from other countries to Washington, D.C. this week for the IMF annual meetings. And they will complain about the Fed. They will complain about the dollar. And they will basically say, you are forcing us to tighten too much. And the global outcome is 
financial conditions that will end up being much tighter than what's needed for fundamental reasons. 